What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today, we're gonna talk about Tesla Energy and specifically its newest product, the Mega Pack. So recently, Elon Musk was on Car Swisher's Recode Decode podcast and mentioned that Tesla could be working on potentially a new battery storage product aimed at utility customers that would be much bigger in capacity than anything the company had previously unveiled. Up until now, Tesla's just had the Powerwall, which is one individual battery, more for homes or residential use, and the Power Pack, which is a pack of those batteries for utility and grid scale solutions. Now the company is unveiling a third category of battery product called the Mega Pack, which is basically like the power pack on steroids for massive grid scale utility projects. And Electrek is out with this unbelievably fascinating report to na- or this week, which basically is detailing and breaking down that the first use of the Mega Pack will be in this new project with PG&E. So PG&E is one of the largest utility companies in the US, and they have partnered with Tesla to do a, a project uh, amounting to over 1.2 gigawatt hours of energy storage to replace three natural gas peaker plants with this battery storage solution, aka the Mega Pack. From the details of this proposal, we actually got the specs of the Mega Pack. So the Mega Pack is basically this massive freight ca- container esque looking device, uh, which is just hu- one huge battery, 23 feet and a half feet long by five and a half feet tall. A single Mega Pack has about a capacity of 2,600. Uh, 73 kilowatt hours, about 12 times that of a power pack two. And this project in particular in California in Moss Landing is going to require 449 mega packs. If you recall what Tesla recently did in Australia, where they built what was at the time the world's largest battery at the Hornsdale Power Reserve to take a peaker plant off the grid um, and respond during power outages, that was sort of the first validation of this massive grid scale peaker plant solution for energy battery storage and that project was done in q1 of 2018 has been a tremendous success in australia the government is saving a ton of money um seems to be excited about continuing doing more projects with tesla like this and that was really a a huge moment in a lot of ways because it validated that tesla's battery storage solutions can not just work in paper but can actually work in the real world and be economical and save utilities a ton of money so that inflection point after the Australia project catalyzed, in my opinion, discussions with PG&E for a very, very similar use case and and, um, and solution for its grid. So 1.2 gigawatt hours of energy storage would be equivalent to 1,200 megawatts. So now, huge shout out to Mo Saleh. You guys got to check out his website. He does an awesome job breaking down charts and has data on how, all sorts of stuff on Tesla's business, but, but pr- particularly how much energy storage is deployed each quarter. So this is a chart of Tesla's energy storage deployments by quarter. And as you can see, the most they've ever done is 373 megawatt hours in Q1 2018. And that was because they did that massive Australia battery project I just talked about. So for them to have a project that's 1,200 megawatts in the works, I mean, it's it's just dwarfing anything that Tesla's done in the past, anything that the entire world's battery grid scale industry has done in the past. This is super exciting stuff. Probably remains hundreds and hundreds of millions in revenue for Tesla from this one project and on a broader note sort of catalyzes uh, or is a sneak peek into the future of what Tesla's energy business could become. On that note, on the excitement of the of the mega packs, I wanted to break down what is happening in on the, in terms of the financials of Tesla's energy business and then and then sort of predict how that's going to evolve and how this is all going to unfold. The solar piece of the business um, is installing uh, megawatt hours of, you know, solar panels or I guess a little bit of solar roofs to actually generate energy. And as you can see, that has been on a downturn trend since Q4 2016, which is the quarter they acquired Solar City. And the reason why this has been on a downtrend is because Tesla's been switching from a loan model to just an outright sale model. So Solar City was relying on basically leasing panels to customers. It would own the panel, it would lease it to you, you put it on your roof, this super complex financial um, equation and system that really wasn't working. And this is when Solar City was losing a ton of money. This was when they were maybe even about to go bankrupt. And then Elon Musk bought the company in late 2016, totally is 180 the business model from this loan leasing style deals to just cash outright sales for its solar panels. And this has made it a lot more profitable. um, And they've they've been growing a lot more, you know, cautiously and strategically. This is basically what needed to happen desperately for Solar 
city is they needed to pivot their business model. Otherwise, they were just going to go bankrupt. And so that's what Elon Musk and Tesla have quietly been doing in the back end here. And that's why we're seeing solar installations actually decline. Um, but as you can see, there's this very interesting trend where they're starting to reverse in 2018 and head back up. So I think we've sort of bottomed out and we're going to start to see ramping uh, solar deployments here in the near future, especially with the solar roof. And once that accelerates, that's Tesla's big new solar product. I think that could seriously ramp up the, the solar installation trend. Um, this is the chart I just showed about battery deployments per quarter. As you can see, I mean, the trend here is up into the right, pretty lumpy because it depends on whether when a big project hits. This is an overlay of, of solar megawatts versus um, battery uh, deployment. So you can just see how solar has been sort of a downtrend. Uh, batteries have been on an uptrend. Okay, so now you get what's going on under the hood here is solar's sort of been slowing down, cooling off, while batteries have been heating up. And this is why I think the growth and really underlying power and excitement of Tesla Energy has been sort of overlooked. Now let's talk about the financials in more detail. So Tesla Energy here, um, this is the quarterly revenue since Q1 2016. Very important to note though that Solar City was acquired uh, was acquired in Q4 2016. So there's a bump, that huge bump in revenue you see is from when they started including Solar City revenue. So you have two things driving the growth here. One is Solar City and that solar business got lumped in. The second is the battery business has taken off in the background. And so on an annual basis, this is what the revenue looks like. There is the year where Solar City made the big jump. And as you can see that the whole growth rate accelerated. Now, if we take a look at the gross margin of the energy business, this is where it gets, it's just been super, super lumpy. Tesla has done some guidance saying that in Q1 and Q4, they do expect energy revenue to be weaker. But frankly, I haven't even really noticed that um, in the gross margin. There's so much weird lumpiness happening in the numbers. But anyway, that is what the gross margin is on a quarterly basis. Hit a low of about 6 and 9%. Um, in Q4 and Q1 in 2018, but seems to be improving nicely. Now, this is what it looks like on an annual basis. Once again, kind of all over the place. Um, on a quarterly basis, here's Tesla's uh, actual dollar value of gross profit for their energy business. So you can see that they were doing really well in 2017. And then sort of as they ramped those uh, low margin battery sales, that sort of hit gross profit, I believe, but rebounding very, very nicely here in uh, late 2018. And this is by year. Here is the gross profit in Tesla's energy business. The biggest reason reason that revenue has gone up, but gross profit here seeing has gone down in 2018 is because in Q1 2018, Tesla had very weak margins because they installed that Australian battery that I've been talking about. And that um, they did, it, they had to install it at like this hundred day challenge. They, they were pressed for time. Um, it was one of the early projects. So that I don't think the costs were where they wanted them to be. They basically did the deal at break even or even lost a little money on it, which seems confusing at first, but in the long run, I think was a, a really strategic move for Tesla. It generated a ton of power a press, a ton of positive PR. Um, it validated the technology. They're getting a, getting a ton of follow-on orders from the Australian government. Now look at what's happening in California because they've shown that they can do this in Australia. Like in many ways they had to do it at break even first. And that's why we've sort of taken a hit to profitability um, in 2018 for the margins of the energy business. Um, but it is important to note that even with this in general, energy overall as a part of the, the bigger Tesla behemoth has been getting bigger and more important. Um, in 2018, it's going to be about 7% of Tesla's overall revenue revenue. And that's because this year they've been focusing heavily on the Model 3 ramp, allocating a ton of batteries and resources to that, not to battery production for um, grid scale utility storage and things like that. And so I think as in 2019, as they focus more um, on the energy side of the business, solar roof, um, things like that, it could become, you know, back to maybe nine or 10% of Tesla's overall revenue potentially. For this next part, I've estimated what Tesla's energy financials are going to look like throughout the next um, three years through 2020. And the biggest trend you'll see here is I actually have growth accelerating the next two years, um, hitting 2.5 billion in revenue in 2019 and 4 billion in 2020, be, with this reason being that heading back to this chart of energy deployments and uh, batteries deployed and solar installed, you can see that I, th I think this solar trend is going to reverse. So A, I think solar has been dampening the growth of the energy segment, and that's going to slowly reverse as they ramp the solar roof. The second trend that's going on is the battery business is on fire. Just going to the battery chart of the business, remember, Tesla has a 1,200 megawatt hour project that they want to come online in 2020. That's over the next five quarters or six quarters or something like that. They want to install this 1,200 megawatt project. So, and that's just one project that Tesla is going. So I think this is the chart that I'm watching closely is battery deployments by quarter because I think Tesla is on the cusp of, of a huge breakout here and we're going to see tremendous growth in this number and the overall energy revenue growth hasn't been, hasn't been showing how strong this battery business is because of the slowing solar numbers. So now that batteries are beginning 
becoming a bigger and bigger piece of that energy revenue, I think the growth rate of the energy revenue overall is going to meet that battery revenue growth rate, which is huge. And so you combine that with the PG&E project, I think we are in for accelerating growth in Tesla's energy business. And eventually, and these are, remember, total rough estimates. I could be way, way off. Um, and I improve slightly uh, ramping gross margins as well. Um, but that is the ener- the revenue and gross profit assumptions I have for Tesla's for the, uh, energy business for the next two years. I think a lot of this also depends on the solar roof, because I think that could be a game-changing multi-billion dollar product um, that could really just accelerate revenue growth off the off the charts um, or another huge, you know, PG&E like project. So that's my update on Tesla energy, you know, behind the scenes, as everybody's focusing on the Model 3, the Model S, you know, the car side of business, so much excited, so much to get excited about there. And uh, believe me, I get it. But on the flip side, you know, Tesla is so much more than that. They're really becoming a full energy company and, and their energy business um, is, is far behind their car business. It's way younger. It's way newer. Um, it, the technology is way more emerging, but I think it's it's an equally exciting opportunity. And to see this mega pack, you know, unfold is, is a huge new puzzle piece in Tesla's energy products sweet and means they're doubling down on meeting these grid scale solutions like what they're doing with PG&E in California, like what they did in Australia. And I think we're only going to see more and more of these huge multi hundred million dollar battery contracts. This is something you get really excited about. Um, this is, you know, that Elon Musk has said the battery and energy business could be just as big as the car business one day. And that's good. We're going to need a lot more projects like the one we're seeing in California if that's going to happen. So really promising to see that this is a business that didn't exist five years ago or four years ago. And now all of a sudden it's on track to do two and a half billion in revenue, hundreds of millions of gross profit, continue to grow rapidly for years and years to come that Tesla's basically created out of thin air based on their battery technology. So really impressive stuff. I think this is an exciting growth driver that's going to get a lot more coverage in 2019 um, as people realize that Tesla is a multi-billion dollar battery and solar company um, as as well as an electric vehicle company. Anyway, this is Hyperchange. Would love to know what you think uh, in the comments below about the mega pack, about Tesla Energy, about my estimates. Huge shout out to all of our Patreon supporters, producers. Definitely check out our Patreon page if you want to support the channel. Also, um, I got my own Tesla referral code, which is epic. I'm so stoked about it. So if you want to buy a Tesla uh, SX or 3 or solar or a solar system in the near future, definitely use my referral code. You'll get six months of free supercharging and it'll really support me and the channel. It'll be epic. Anyway, this is HyperChange. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.